now we're rounding the bend. We're getting to the next phase, which is the Enlightenment. And we said that the world has changed dramatically now. There's more tolerance because of the Protestant Reformation, which we discussed in a previous video. Also, in the sphere of economics, there was the French Revolution and the establishment of equal rights. And we said the challenge for the Jews, therefore, was the inference. It wasn't persecution, pressure, trying to break us from within. Now, as the doors began to be open for the Jews in non-Jewish societies that they were living in, the crisis was one of assimilation, that maybe we'll just melt away in the non-Jewish environs and we'll cease to exist as a separate, distinct national entity. So it would be very reasonable at this point for someone to think that the Jews are eventually going to gain acceptance and we just have to work at how we want to relate to that new acceptance. You know, why would there be increased Jew hatred? But we're going to see here there's going to be a new type of Jew hatred because if a religion is no longer the barrier to such a large degree between Jew and Catholic or Protestant, what's going to be the form of hatred directed towards us? And in keeping with the mindset of the day, as the world becomes more enlightened and more scientific, we have the emergence of a racial hatred, which is anti-Semitism, which in a way is a much more dangerous form of hatred. Because with religious persecution, there is a way out, and that is to convert. But if your race is tainted, if you've got bad or impure blood, there's nothing you can do. And that was the charge that was directed towards the Jewish people. As Darwinism became more in the forefront of social thought, people were inclined to look at racial differences between one another. And that's what happened. And as a result, the more we assimilated, the greater threat we became to the non-Jews because hey, they're coming into our society and they're becoming discernible. They're like a virus in the body. We better combat them. Otherwise, they'll infiltrate our system and we'll die of a Jewish disease before we know it. And therefore, in this section, we're going to look at different expressions of anti-Semitism that emerged during the 19th and then 20th century. So in this new age of tolerance and equal rights, there was an issue that these new nations had to figure out, which is what should be the status of the Jews living in their midst. And that is known as the Jewish question. Should the Jews be granted equal rights like all the other citizens and be considered just loyal nationalists? Or are the Jewish people really using us and their plan is just to get back to the promised land and they're just using us as a way station? So that was debated and we spoke about that in a previous video. Now imagine you're a Jew at this time. You're probably thinking things are pretty rosy. I mean, religion is no longer a barrier and society is advancing and there's all this new opportunity, so it just looks like they just have to you know, iron out the uh, wrinkles, but we'll get there. But then we have the rise of anti-Semitism during this period, and as I just mentioned, it was a very different form of hatred. It was no longer religious persecution, it was racial. I just want to clarify one thing. Why is it called anti-Semitism? You know, why isn't just you know, Jew hatred, anti-Jews? What is Semitism? Who are the Semites? Or what does this have to do with us? So to clarify, in the Torah, the Jews are the descendants of Noah's son, Shame. Noah had three sons. One of them was Shame. And Abraham was the 10th generation descendant of Shame. And that's actually recorded in the book of Genesis. So when the anti-Semites, when these Jew haters were looking for a term that would identify the threat, being that religion was no longer the threat, it was the very racial nature of the Jews, they chose Semite as the term to best identify it. And remember, there's no way out for the Jews now because they can't change their race. So now let's look at three different expressions of how anti-Semitism emerged during this time in the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. The first expression of anti-Semitism was in the rise of anti-Semitic political parties, where their central platform was that Jews are the source of our problems. And therefore, if we can just deal with them, everything would go A-OK. -okay. Now, we're so used to thinking that this is the way it's always been, but this was a new thing at the end of the 19th century. They had different solutions. One is just take away all the Jews' rights so they can't advance the way they were advancing or expel them or even send them back to the land of Israel. There was even a conference of anti-Semitic political parties. Remember, this is their central platform is the Jews are the source of their problems. The next major anti-Semitic event was something known as the Dreyfus Affair, which happened in 1894 in France. Alfred Dreyfus was an officer in the French army and he was accused of espionage, of passing secrets over to the Germans. So eventually he's tried, he's found guilty, but it turns out it was really based on forgery and political pressure. And people were saying, see, see what happens when you give a Jew equal rights, they end up betraying us. And he was disgraced when he was then sent off to Devil's Island for a life sentence. Now people sensed the injustice and there was an uproar 
that, hey, this is not right. I mean, this is France. This is the home of the Enlightenment. People say, give the Jews equal rights. So France was eventually split. Communities were split. Families were split. It was a very intense battle. You had those who were for the Enlightenment ideals. And hey, this is a new world. And Jews should have, as I just said, equal rights versus the old prejudices, which was found uh, heavily in the church and also with the military, that the Jews can't be trusted. Uh, We've got to go back. This whole idea of the Enlightenment is a bad idea. So it was a real battle throughout French society. It's interesting to point out that this is the first time media was used in a political battle. One of the great literary figures in France, a man named Emile Zola, published an article called Jacques where he was accusing the French government of not giving the Jew his due justice. There was such a public uproar that they end up trying him again. And even though it becomes clear that it really is a forgery, he's found guilty and eventually he is pardoned. Now, it was a real disgrace for France. In fact, the whole world was waiting to see what would happen in terms of the Dreyfus Affair. I think you'll find it interesting that as a result of the Dreyfus Affair, a law was passed separating church from state. And this is where it comes from, because the state, if it's going to represent all peoples of different backgrounds, the church can't have the influence on society and the way things are run the way it had in the past. The last source of anti-Semitism they want to focus on here is on a document called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It was published in 1903. It was a fraudulent document produced by the Russians, and it claimed to be the minutes of international Jews meeting, discussing world domination, how they were going to take over the world. And the plan was that they were going to be so much a part of Gentile society, so indistinguishable, but eventually they would rise in influence and control of society and bring about moral decay and corruption so the society would fall apart and Jews would take over. Eventually, it was republished by the Germans and became very popular there. And then even in the United States, Henry Ford, uh, the great car maker, he was known to be an anti-Semite. He published 500,000 copies of it. And when he bought the Dearborn Independent newspaper, he ran a series of articles featuring chapters from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. And until today, it's very popular in many societies around the world. So what I want to point out here is that we should realize that during the Enlightenment, Jew hatred took on a whole new face. It wasn't against Judaism and our tradition. It was against our very being, that we just can't be trusted. In fact, the more we assimilate, the greater danger we become. We can't hold to the ideals of the nations we're living in, according to many. And we have a plan. Our plan is to take over the world. And therefore, the Jews are a sinister threat. I'm sure you can see where this is heading, that this is really laying the groundwork for what's going to come next, which is the Holocaust. So let's do a little review. We have during the Enlightenment, the Jewish question, what should be the status of Jews as citizens amongst the nations they're living in? And that's going to give rise to a whole new form of anti-Semitism. Semitism comes from Noah's son, shame. Abraham was a 10th generation descendant of his. And the idea was that we as a race represent a threat, regardless of our beliefs that are evident to those that we're living amidst. We then looked at three different forms of anti-Semitism. We have the rise of anti-Semitic political parties. We're the source of all their problems. They have to either take away our rights or expel us, send us back to the land of Israel. Then we have the famous Dreyfus Affair, which lasted 10 years beginning in 1894. He was an officer in the French army, accused of espionage. He was found guilty, but it was really a forgery, and people start to realize that. He gets exiled, but people sense the injustice, and there was a real fight In terms of the Enlightenment ideals, those who supported the ideas of the Enlightenment and fairness to all, and those who had the old prejudices and did not trust those who were different. This is the first time media was used in a political battle. He's tried, he's found guilty again, which is a real outrage. Eventually, he is pardoned. And this leads to the separation of church from state. And the last thing was the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which again, as I said, is a very popular document even until today, produced by the Russians, but says the Jews are planning world domination to bring moral decay to the world. Germans republish it, and even Henry Ford publishes it here and runs excerpts in his newspaper.